I'm just admiring what some argue as the hottest Italian in years. And quite frankly, I could do this all day. Since Alfa Romeo launched the 156 in 1997, I've loved its coupe-esque looks, its cheeky offset number plate, and that suggestive grille. My one disappointment, though, is that they've never brought out a hardcore version. Like pop sensation in Gareth Gate, the 156 had all the right lines in all the right places, but it fell short on testosterone. Now it's finally got some with the new GTA. Usually, car manufacturers like nothing more than to hide their engine under a shiny piece of plastic, but not the Italians. They are a proud bunch. Alfa's 3.2-litre V6 is one of the prettiest I've seen this side of a Lamborghini. For £27,000, you get 17-inch telephone dial alloys, stiffer suspension and a tasty bit of skirt. The interior is just as easy on the eye, with well-placed swoops, bulges and silver-coloured trimmings. It's also good to see that Alfa have turned the quality control up. They've included every toy there is, some extremely tactile leather and a jolly good sound system. Not that it's needed with that V6 to listen to. Time to stop looking and start touching. Normally, the thought of 250 horses propelling the front wheels would cause a hemorrhage in any engineer's mind. And mine. I've always said that 220 was just about the limit. After all, those tyres have to steer the car as well. But Alpha seem to have struck the golden balance between lots of power and smooth steering. Well done, chaps. The GTA has a front suspension that's so sophisticated, even Alpha find it hard to explain. But one thing's clear, it gets out of shape beautifully. Though only when provoked and when the traction control is off. Whereas the old 2 litre was the best handling 156, this is simply in a different league. Yes, there's lots of understeer if you steam into one of these greasy corners, but you can put the power on really aggressively on the way out without the steering yanking under the pressure. like some Japanese super saloons I've driven because it is rather comfortable. Dodgy surfaces are smoothed out well and dare I say it, it is rather relaxing. Where the Evos and Imprezas shake you up and egg you on, the Alpha will be happy to cruise along when you want to. One thing that's not happy though is its dreadful turning circle. Three point turns end up being five point ones, but the engine noise more than makes up for this minor fault. Before today, if anyone asked me who builds the best all-round sports saloon, I'd probably say BMW, or for the more hairy-chested, one of those tricked-up Japanese machines. But now, this 156 GTA joins the gang, mixing German maturity with a zest for action. Plus, from any angle, it is simply beautiful.